Now you see it, now you don't. From zero to 175 miles per hour in a fraction of a second, today's top golfers can turn a golf ball into one of the fastest projectiles in sports. It's a nice feel when you can kind of crush it and it's this straight down the middle, long and far. Suzanne Patterson is a professional golfer on the LPGA Tour, with top 10 finishes in more than a dozen 2013 LPGA Tour events. In early 2014, Patterson was second in the women's world golf rankings. You know, there's nothing that beats hitting a pure golf shot. If it's a driver, if it's an iron or a wedge, it's a sweet feel and you know it. Whether crushing it or tapping it, getting the golf ball moving is explained by Newton's first and second laws of motion. Newton's laws can be seen in all aspects of the game of golf, whether it's impact, whether it's the flight of the ball, or even the bounce and roll of the golf ball. Jim Hubble is a research engineer at the United States Golf Association's Research and Test Center. Newton's first law basically states that a body at rest tends to stay at rest. A body in motion wants to stay in motion in a straight line unless it's affected by some external force. Newton's first law of motion, or the law of inertia, says that objects tend to resist change in motion. This means the motion of an object with balanced or zero net forces will remain constant. The force of Earth's gravity pulling down on a ball is balanced by the upward push of the T. This balance of forces means there is a net or total force of zero, and the ball's state of motion remains the same. The force that a golf club applies to the ball is called unbalanced because there isn't an equal force to push back or balance the force of the club. So a ball on a tee is going to stay on the tee unless there's some external force that changes that. An external force like a club. And just as force is needed to initiate motion, it's also needed to stop motion. The rolling ball, it would be an example of a ball rolling on a line or a constant direction at a uniform velocity, is going to stay at that uniform velocity on it unless it's affected by some external force. Here, the external force is the friction of the grass. Newton's second law of motion relates to the motion of an object when an unbalanced force causes a change in velocity. How quickly or slowly the object's velocity changes is called acceleration. Newton's second law really states or introduces the idea of acceleration. Acceleration of a body will be directly proportional to the force you apply to it and it'll be inversely proportional to the mass of the object being accelerated. This means that if a large force is applied to a small mass, it results in a larger or more rapid acceleration. If the same force is applied to a larger mass, it results in a smaller or slower acceleration. This is represented by the equation acceleration equals force divided by mass, more commonly stated as F equals M times A. So it's pretty intuitive that a larger force will create a larger acceleration. A lighter body or lighter mass object will be more easily accelerated than a heavier object. At the USGA Test Center, Hubble explains how they can measure the change in velocity of a golf ball at rest. This is our initial velocity measurement device. It measures, given a specific impact, how fast that ball will fly. Once the trigger is pulled, this striker comes out of the club, out of this flywheel, while it's spinning, and ultimately strikes the ball. And we'll measure the time it takes for the ball to fly to this far end of the test area and that gives us an initial velocity of the ball, measurement of how fast the ball would come off the tee. The ball speed will be about one and a half times the velocity of the club coming into impact. At 120 mile an hour club head speed, after the impact with the ball, the ball will take off at about 176 miles per hour. So that's a pretty significant acceleration from zero to 176 miles per hour in 500 microseconds. How much force accelerates the ball that quickly? Say the ball takes off at 176 miles per hour, or 78.7 meters per second. The collision happens in 500 microseconds. The change in velocity divided by collision time equals the acceleration on the ball. The mass of the ball is 1.62 ounces, or 0 0.0459 kilograms. The mass of the ball multiplied by the acceleration equals the force of the club on the ball. That's a force of more than three quarters of a ton. 
From teeing up to tapping in, Newton's laws of motion are in play with inertia, force, mass, and acceleration found in every stroke.